Welcome to the circus. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the circus. Uh, this is uh, Patton's Pickup. This is another update on my uh, hashtag under 1000 group build. Uh, this is where I'm turning a 1941 Chevrolet pickup by Ravel in 125th scale into a uh, half track. And what I'm going to be talking about here today is uh, the things I'm having to do with the frame in order to get the half tracks or the tracks attached to the frame. Uh, it's a little more complicated than I thought, but uh, not too bad. But before I get started on the uh, patents pickup, uh, the other day I noticed uh, I was going through it, uh, Atlanta's Toys and Hobby because, uh, well, for one thing, the uh, I saw that Sidewinder that was coming out. Then I started going through uh, their various kits there, and I noticed that they uh, have released the uh, old uh, monogram uh, 1926 Mack truck. That's the uh, log hauler. Uh, now, I'm not necessarily interested in the log hauler, though it is kind of cool. I would just make it as a black, uh, as a uh, basic uh, flatbed. I'd probably put something on it other than the logs if I were to buy it. But what I have is I've got an old uh, uh, 1926 Mack dump truck, but I did not have the tires for it. So I contacted uh, Atlantis Toys and Hobby, uh, told them my dilemma that I needed the tires, and uh, well, I got the tires now. Yeah, I had to pay for them. It was uh, seven fifty shipped and everything else, but it was nice of them to do that. It's not like uh, I lost the uh, the the tires for the uh, for their kit. I I bought the uh, the dump truck knowing that the tires weren't there, uh, and was hoping that I would be able to get them eventually somewhere. Uh, and thankfully, um, Atlantis Toys and Hobby came through for me. So. You know, if you've got one of those old kits that uh, Atlantis is making now and you need uh, a part, contact them. Be honest about it. Might cost you a couple bucks, but man, now I've got the full kit again. So that's pretty cool. So I'm really happy with that. And I do plan on building that uh, dump truck eventually. So uh, who knows? Maybe I'll turn that into a half track. Probably not. Anyway, let's get back to Patton's pickup. The very first thing I did when I uh, uh, started working on this is I, I, as you notice, the frame was painted black because that's the color it's supposed to be. I got the wheels in place up front, and I also had uh, put the uh, back axle on uh, with the um, with the suspension to see just how high this was going to be sitting, and it was sitting pretty high. It was way up like that. I was like, that's really too high. But I had always assumed that what I was going to have to do is kind of do something else to get this like so. And my original plan was to run basically a shaft from the sides of the axle going back a little bit or down or something like that. So I drop it like that. Uh, but then I started thinking about it as I was doing that. And it's like, wait a minute, why are you uh, hanging the axle or putting the axle on springs? Because this whole thing does not move up and down. The suspension is actually down here on the bogies. This is where all the suspension work is. Uh, this axle should be solid. And so what I did was I just glued the axle straight to the frame. And then I was looking at it and trying to get it so that I could do something um, and I realized that basically I was going to have to put this, uh, to get it, um, this is the right height, put the dice there. That's where I would need to actually get these things sitting, somewhere around there. And if you notice, that puts this wheel or the, uh, the track above the frame. Um, and so what I realized is... I'm going to have to take a tube and cut it. And then when I hook that on place, I have a place to actually hook the uh, the sprocket and the bogies and everything on there. 
but now you see where the axle is here. And so what I figured what I was going to do, because I want to make sure that this looks like it can actually work. Um, originally what I had was this was all the way out uh, to the side and this was sticking out about like that. And I realized it was just way too far away. Uh, and, um, I really needed to get this in closer. So I ended up having to cut the axles because otherwise this was getting in the way also of the track. And now what I have is I have it cut pretty short. And what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to be running tubes off of here going back. And so it'll be uh, new drive shafts uh, working off of a joint or a sprocket that is hidden inside the tubes here. Uh, going back to this rear tube. Where is it at? And that is going to be the driving force there. And uh, what I had always wanted to do is continue to still have the spare tire back there. That's one of the reasons why I originally had the driving shaft on the outside here. But I will have enough room using this size of tube to run that right along the frame there. And then I'm just going to have to close this all in a little bit and clear it all up. I'll also probably need to do a new drive shaft for the length there because it is not the correct length for everything. Um, but that's uh, what you're going to see next. Uh, and, uh, well, hang on a bit. Oh, this. I actually found a pretty thick uh, sprue. Had to shave it down, stick it in there, and then I also had to trim it. Notice how it is trimmed so that it will actually fit into this tube so that I'll have something solid for it to hook onto. So that's how all that is working. And then if you notice here, we can get enough light here. Hard to see, but right here and here are two other points that I'm going to have to drill out a little bit and I'm going to move and attach attach these points to the frame as well so that everything here, there'll be three points of contact for here. The, uh, the main shaft and then these two points will also be holding out and welded into the uh, frame so that you actually have a nice solid uh, fixture holding everything in place. And like I said, because this is the, uh, the actual suspension part and this is where you use for track tension and everything. Uh, that part up here uh, really doesn't move and needs to be somehow attached to the, uh, the frame of the kit. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So in a minute, you'll see it that way because I'm going to try and get it all in place. Also, I've got to, uh, the band here, this is all going to be black because this is actually... Uh, a rubber band kind of track that would be on this kind of a uh, structure. This is very similar to the uh, type of uh, tracking system that would have been used on the uh, on the uh, M3 half track, which was just a rubber band track. One continuous track, if it broke, you had to replace the whole band. You didn't replace uh, a single track link. Um, so that will get painted black and then I've got to do all the other little painting and everything here and there. So I'm going to get, uh, at least on the, this side, I've got to get this side fixed up. The outside I can do a little work on later, but, uh, once it's all built and everything, but that's, uh, the other things that I need to do, but it's going to work. It looks like it'll work. Uh, and, um, the other thing someone had mentioned, uh, using a, a roller up front. This is a de-ditching roller uh, and this is just an evergreen tube. I'm just going to fill in the sides here with a piece of evergreen plastic and somehow attach that up in front for the de-ditching roller. Uh, so that'll be the front bumper instead. And um, I also bought the MPC uh, Godzilla Planetary Defense Vehicle which is just a Willys Jeep. But there's two ways you can make that. There's a, a civilian version and also a uh, the, the military version. And I bought that because, well, you get a Thompson submachine gun in there. You get an M1 carbine in there. You also get a fairly something that sort of looks like a gas can 
that I will be uh, doing some modification on, plus a shovel and a uh, axe. And I'm going to put the shovel and axe probably on the uh, on the back tailgate, as well as and then the gas can is going to be attached on there somewhere. But I also have uh, an M1 carbine and a Thompson submachine gun that I can throw in the cab, and a really poorly designed uh, 50 caliber. But don't need to worry too much about that. For those who have not seen it, here's the uh, machine guns I'm going to use. Uh, let me get one of these out. These are beautiful. I picked them up. And it's like, I don't care if it's uh, water cold. This thing just looks great. It's a nice uh, 30 caliber and 124 scale. See that beauty? That thing looks fantastic. And so it also has the uh, ammunition can and everything else that goes with it. So that will be the machine gun up on top. I might still be able to put that in a ring. I don't know yet. I'm thinking about it. But you you have seen the hatch already too. So that's where I'm at right now with all this. It's all really coming together pretty good. Um, might start painting Patton pretty soon too. In any case, with that said, uh, hang on a bit and uh, I'll try and get these uh, wheels in place. Wheels, tracks, something. Okay, we are getting there. Um, I have the the tracks in place. Uh, the main axle is holding them firm. I also have the uh, secondary supports going in place for the rear. Uh, I have this beam here. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there or not. Uh, it's not really helping any, but it was necessary to begin with to keep the tracks uh, aligned correctly so I might end up removing that if I can if not it will just get painted black like all the other part underneath here uh, and as you see I'm already painting the uh, the tread area black I'll need to do some touching up on the green in here but it is coming along and uh, I think once I get it all blacked out and everything it'll be rather for um, you know, some uh, highlighting with uh, steel and such. And I need to finish uh, with the front uh, axle and everything, get the shocks in place and get everything else that needs to be there. But it is sitting um, relatively straight and flat. All four points are on the ground and um, the treads are equally spaced away from the frame and uh, are aligned uh, parallel to the body and as you can see here the uh, body is pretty much parallel to the ground um, the only regret I have is the treads uh, extend a little bit beyond the back of the vehicle but I, I will be able to live with that um, which means I could have pulled them forward a little bit more but I kind of like the stance that it has so I'll figure something out with that. But um, I kind of like the way it's going right now. Uh, pretty happy with it. Got a good piece of ground clearance there. Uh, but the body is level. So I think it'll all work out. Now to uh, get some more painting done on the uh, frame. And then I'll start concentrating on the body. Thank you for visiting Toby's Glue Bomber Circus. If you liked what you saw, please consider giving it a thumbs up sharing it with your friends, leaving a comment, and subscribe and ring that notification bell. Really do appreciate it. Thanks again.